Hello, and welcome to Guidance for Better Life. Today I have a friend of mine and my son-in-law and an author, a published author. His name is David Hughes, and I'm really excited to have him. He's going to share a story where he saw a departed uncle in a dream and had a profoundly beautiful, beautiful experience. And I think you all enjoy today's show, so thank you for being here. Hi, David. Hi. It's like a long line. You're my friend, and yeah. you've been a student up at our school for many mm -hmm. years. Over since 10 years. 10 years. Mm -hmm. And you married my youngest daughter. I did. Lucky man. I am. And she's a very lucky daughter. So thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you for having me. This story is uh, it's in Visiting visiting Loved Ones in Heaven. I think you're chapter 36 in here. Chapter 36. And it's a beautiful dream <clears throat> you mm -hmm. had with your uncle, Uncle Ed. Uncle Ed. And I was going to say in an introduction, he was your favorite, but I don't want to get into a family. Don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. So <laughs> I, I want to make, protect you there. So he may nice. not be the favorite. He's just some uncle. Right. But we know better, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but this part we'll cut we'll out. We'll cut this part sure. out. So it's Uncle Ed. <laughs> right. Uh, would you like to share the dream? It's, it's, there's, sure. It's, it's a dream where you had a good experience, but there was a bigger a bigger message right. than just the time with Uncle Ed. Right. So my Uncle Ed, who was one of my favorite uncles growing one. up, um, he was a lot of fun, had a great sense of humor. Um, and just one of the things I always remember is he made the best blueberry pancakes. Everybody would talk about how good his blueberry pancakes were. And blueberries are very healthy, very right. good for you. Right. So um, about 10 years ago, he was unexpectedly diagnosed with late-stage cancer. Now, in your story, he was, it was a surprise, right? It was a surprise. He was only, I think, in his 70s, you know, earlier. And he was in good health. He ate healthy. He exercised. So total surprise. Blueberries. Yeah, healthy. exactly. So it was something somewhat unexpected. Right. Okay. And it progressed very rapidly to going into hospice. And then before we knew really what had happened, he was gone. He had passed away. Okay. So, and of course, it was a shock to the family and very sad. Um, and I never got to see him through this process because I lived in Virginia and he lived in Florida and it happened so quickly. I was in high school at the time and I just didn't make it down there before he passed. Did you have regrets not making it down? I think so. And, you know, maybe just a lack of closure as well, um, okay. not having seen him and talked to him again. So Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so you had a dream. But I was given a dream. So maybe you have some Which I believe here. was a gift from God to yeah. see him again shortly after he passed. Yeah, God can use his Holy Spirit to provide dreams, bring people together. Right. He can do anything. Mm -hmm. And in this case, maybe, I wonder, it's not in your story, but I wonder if he knew deep down you, you, you didn't have that last moment together. I think so. And I don't know if I ever verbally expressed that prayer, but I think it was in my heart. And I think God knew that. And we talk about this on the show through many different interviews. Even if you don't express a prayer, formally sit mm -hmm. down and write it out. If God knows there's something in your heart that's very important to you, very dear to you, right. and it's good for everybody, he'll turn it into a prayer. Mm -hmm. So God loves us so much, you don't have to do a formal prayer. And I think you're probably right. That's, right. that's only you can say that he probably knew you missed him, mm -hmm. almost your favorite uncle. Right. <laughs> and you didn't have that closure. Mm -hmm. And so you take it that, are you saying you think a prayer was answered basically? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Very cool. Mm -hmm. So the dream was, um, as I mentioned, Ed lived in Florida. And the dream looked like we were in the Florida Everglades on this beautiful river. And it was myself, my Uncle Ed, and his wife, Roz. And we were each in our own kayaks, kayaking down the river on just this gorgeous day. Mm -hmm. And we got to spend some, spend some more time together. And it was a crystal clear dream. I can still picture perfectly foliage dipping into the water and the ripples going out from it and the sunlight reflecting on the surface of the water. You said warm air. It yeah, was very, warm air. very vivid with all your very senses, vivid. not just visual. Right. Smell, mm -hmm. visual, mm -hmm. feelings, everything. That's right. Very real. That's right. Perhaps it was not just a dream, it was a real experience. I think it was. I think okay. it was more than what people sometimes call a dream. You know, it was more than just 
mind stuff. I think it was more than I wish I had seen him, so my brain kind of put it together. It was so real. Do you think God, well, God can do that. He can truly, we have other stories we'll share someday, but God can literally bring a departed loved one who continues, continues on. He still mm -hmm. knows you and loves you. And literally can bring him together in the in the heavens, visiting in heavens. And I believe that's what happened. It was a real experience. It was so real. And I remember laughing <laughs> with him and Roz, just floating down the river, having so much fun together. Um, and one of the interesting things was sometimes we were all close together in our kayaks. Okay. Sometimes we were farther apart, but we could still see each other. When you're farther apart on the river, were you too far to talk? We could still communicate, you know, we'd, we'd have just, to talk a little louder, okay. but we were within eye shot and ear shot of each other still. Now, what did, in your story, you elaborate on that, that mm -hmm. there was a, you felt there was a lesson here. Right. You call your story River of Life. Mm -hmm. So besides seeing your, one of your nice uncles <laughs> right. um, and have this profound experience, a mm -hmm. gift of love from God, I, is mm -hmm. I think what you're saying, there's a, you, you came up with, this was really interesting in your story. You thought that God was also teaching you something. Right. When the kayaks were close together, what did that mean to you? When the kayaks were close together represented when we were both alive physically. We were close together on okay. the river of life, kind of. We could talk, okay. see each other occasionally, call each other. Like you did before he passed. Right? right. Okay. And then when the kayaks were farther apart, that represented the current time after he had passed. So we weren't as close. I was, I'm was. i still here in the physical. He's moved on to someplace else. Okay. But we were still okay. We were both on the river of life, just at different parts. Okay. But you mm -hmm. still have, you're still connected? Right. You still care for each other? Is it? Right. That love connection is still there. He, He's still okay. alive, not in the sense that not we often use body. it, not in a physical body, but spiritually he's sure. still alive and well and enjoying his ride down the river. Okay. So. so it's like you got to visit him where he is now. <laughs> yeah, probably. That's more accurate probably than him visiting me, okay. I guess. And what did that do for you? Because that's bigger than just you and right. your uncle. Right. Well, <clears throat> first of all, it showed me. I I had heard of experiences like this before where people are visited or have some type of communication from a loved one who's passed, but I yeah. never experienced it. Okay. So I was, you know, going on secondhand knowledge, I guess you could say, but this okay. made it real for me that, you know, he's gone physically, but he is still okay. And you still know him, you still care about him, right. and he still cares about you. Right, and that love connection transcends okay. time, it transcends the... I have a physical body right now, and he doesn't. It's deeper than all that. But you both still exist, but in, in different yeah. realities, you right. might say. Right, right. And maybe even bigger than mm. that, me and my uncle, was that God loves us enough to give me this dream. Yeah. You know, the reason I believe I got this dream for me and him and Roz, too, was because God loves us. So it's not just you and your uncle right. and your aunt. Mm -hmm. Are you saying, so this is a different direction of the interview, which I appreciate. <laughs> this is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Are you saying that maybe even more important than seeing your uncle mm -hmm. is your relation with, did your relationship with the divine grow or yes. strengthen? Yes, it grew and strengthened. Okay, that's like a huge plus factor right. on top of something already beautiful. Right, yeah. And I'm... Huh. Very grateful for the dream with my uncle. I'm grateful for the lesson about the river of life. But I think, I didn't think about this until you asked me, but yeah. I think after all these years, what's really stuck with me the most is that God loved the three of us enough to give us, to bring us together for this give one more that, day. that closure. Right. Very cool. So. so, anything else you'd like to share, David? I think I... Shared what I was planning on sharing. Any surprises? I had more, but... Anything you want to tell your other favorite uncles? I love you guys, too. Okay. Peter and Jerry and everybody. Good. Thank you Bill. so much. And I'm surprising you. I've covered something up, and I don't know if the audience can tell. I held up earlier where your story is visiting loved ones in heaven. Mm -hmm. But underneath that, and this, I didn't tell you I was going to do this, you wrote several short stories in our other series of books. Mm -hmm. But you're a full-blown author in your own right. 
This is your book. You wrote mm -hmm. it. I'm kind of in there, so it's on my author page, Del Hall. But you're you're the author, The Journey Home. How a living prophet helped me find my true eternal self and guide me home to the heart of God. That sounds like a good read, and I know it is. So <laughs> thank you. I hope you don't mind me plugging your book. Nope. Thank you very much. So thank you very much, and uh, thank you. I really hope uh, this show and David's story blessed you. And thank you for watching.